Hey guys, in today's video I'll show you how to create a vellum leaf explosion using volume velocity. Let's dive in. So let's start by importing the assets into Houdini. So in my case, I will use Quixel Bridge and I will use some mint leaves for this animation. So you can type mint into the search bar here and you can download the asset from here. So in my case, I have already downloaded it in 4K resolution. So I can just click on export and it will import the asset directly into Houdini. So I will click on that. So here I have my asset correctly imported into Houdini and I have uh, my material network created by default. So if I dive inside, we can see we have the redshift material correctly assigned to the leaves. And here I have my Atlas splitter with the different leaves here. So in my case, I will select this null. So I will click on Control C. And here I can go back into the object level and let's create a new geometry node. So here you can rename it as you want. So in my case, I will put it R&D and I will dive inside and here I will select the object merge to import my different leaves into this uh, new object. And here you can press P to open this parameter. So here I will click on Control V to paste my nulls into this object merge. And now, now I have my leaves into this new geometry object. So here I will um, add a, a new loop. So let's add for each connected pieces. So here into the loop, we can start by adding a remesh node because for now the uh, leaves are very, very low resolution and I think I can't make any simulation with this type of topology. So let's add a remesh node and let's place it into the loop and we can visualize maybe one leaf. So you can select single pass here and you can select the leaf you like. So maybe that one. And here into the remesh node, I can decrease the target size. So I think I will put 0.02, something like this to get a bit more resolution into the leaves with triangles for the vellum simulations. So here I can also add a transform node. So maybe I will add before the remesh and I can transform into the uh, X axis to 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees. And now I can add a match size node to uh, simply put the, the leaves into the center of our scenes. So with the match size node, we can do that. So now we have the leaves into the center of the scenes and maybe we can add a transform node to increase maybe the size of each leaf. So here with the transform node, I will put the size at two, for example. So something like this. And now we can uh, disable the single pass into the loop here. So we can add an attribute wrongles. And here we can define a variant attribute, which is equal to the class attribute. And the class attribute is uh, by default created with the connectivity node. So here, let's start by adding an attribute promote. And let's promote the class attribute from primitive to points. So let's select primitive here and let's select the class attribute. So now the class attribute is on our points. And with the attribute wranglers here, let's create a new attribute called variant. So E at variant because it's an integer, which is equal to the class E at class. And now we can use this variant attribute to randomly copy the different leaves into the points. So let's start by adding a grid to create some points on it. So with the grid here, we can uh, put the size by default, it's 10 by 10, but I think it's a bit too big. So let's put two by two. And here, let's move the grid a bit upwards on the Y axis. So let's add a transform node. And here you can put the value at maybe 2.5 into the Y axis. So now we have the grid something like here. And now let's add a scatter node to create some points into our geometry. And here into the point number, in my case, I will put um, 350 instead of 1000. So I think it will be announced for um, our simulations. So now let's add an attribute randomize just to randomize a little bit the, the size of our leaves. So into the attribute, we can change from color to P scale for the scale of each individual leaves. And here we can put the dimension at one and we can put the minimum value at something like 0.75, for example. And now let's use an attribute from PCS node to later randomize the uh, different leaves into the points. So we can plug the points into the first input here for the point, point cloud. And we can put the geometry library into the second input. And here the, um, the piece attribute is not the name, but it's the variant attribute. So we have created this, this attribute here into the attribute wrangles. And now let's add the copy to points to copy the geometry into the different points here. So let's add the geometry into the first input and let's plug the points into the second input. And to see the result of our randomization, we can add a color node here. Or maybe after the attributes wrongers. So let's put the attributes wrongers here. 
And for the color here, we can select the random from attributes and our attribute is our attribute variance. So now let's see the result of our copy two points. So I will go into the first frame here. So now we can see we have each leaves into each point. So it's not what we need. So into the copy two point, we can select the piece attribute here. And instead of name, we need to put the variance because it's an attribute we have created. And now we can see we have all the leaves um, placed randomly into the different points. So here you can also add, if you want, the point jitter node. And here into the point jitter, you can remove the X and the Z, the Z, and you can keep the Y axis. And here you can change the scale if you want, just to remove some intersection between the leaves. So I think we don't have many, many intersections for now, but you can play with the position of the scatter. So for the seeds, if you have uh, intersections, so you can also play with the scale of the grid, but I think it will be good for this one. Imagine having access to over 40 hours of exclusive Houdini tutorials, and that library keeps growing every month with brand new content. On Arda Labs, you'll find in-depth Houdini tutorials covering motion design, simulations, product visualization, and more. Plus, you get access to all project files so you can follow along step by step. And right now, we're offering an extra 20% off the annual membership, on top of the 10% discount already included when compared to the monthly plan. This exclusive deal is available for the first 30 people, so don't miss out. Click the link below, your 20% discount is applied automatically. Secure your spot before it's gone. So now let's create our first Vellum simulation. So let's add the Vellum uh, close. And here, in my case, I will keep the value all by default, but you can play with the bend stiffness if you want to get some less or more stiff leaves. And here I will add my Vellum solver after my Vellum close. So here, most of the setting will be by default, except the substep, maybe we can put at 2 and we can increase the collision path to 30. And here into the force, we can keep the gravity by default and you can also play with the friction. But in my case, I will keep it by default and the rest is absolutely by default. So now let's add a collider for our first uh, Venom simulation here. So let's add a box. And for this box, we will change the size to uh, 5, 2, 5 and 5. So we have a box here. So now we can select the uh, bottom faces, which is that one. And we can simply press uh, E for the scale, or you can select this icon to change the scale of this face. And here you can change the scale like this on the green and red axis. And here in my case, I will put the scale at something like 0.38 in both axes. So like this. And now we can remove the top and the bottom faces. So let's select them. So we have this one already selected. Let's select that one and click on remove on the keyboard. So now we have this type of shape. So we can maybe use the reverse. So I think I'm not sure if um, this got an importance for the collider, if the face is oriented correctly. But in case we can use the reverse. And then we can use the transform node to place it correctly based on our leaves. So we can put the leaves here and we can visualize our transform. So in my case, I will put the translate at 1.52 here and for the uniform scale I will reduce the scale because for now you can see it's a bit too big so I will put at 0.45 and now we have this result with the leaves and our collider so we can put the collider into the third input of our vellum close here so let's plug here and now we have everything else by default into the solver and the vellum close so now let's add a file cache and we can rename it something like uh, vellum first sim tutorials and here you can put it in explicit so in my case i like to put in the cache folder and a dollar os folder which is the name of the node here and in my case i will put the last frame at something like uh, maybe 144 and now we can click on save to disk and we can wait for the uh, simulation is done so i will probably wait around three or four minutes something like this so now let's click on save to disk and of course, it doesn't work because I forget to add my uh, ground into the Venom solver. So don't forget to go into the solver here or into the force. Uh, sorry, into the solver here, you can add the ground position. So the ground will be at zero into uh, the Y axis. So let's add the ground position. Uh, let's recache the simulation one more time. So let's click on save to disk. So here the first Venom simulation is done. So let's see the result of our file cache. And now we can see we have all the leaves into the floor. So we can maybe freeze the simulation at the frame. 
maybe uh, 96 but we can see we have a leaf who are making probably uh, weird stuff here so maybe we can remove some of the leaves here so let's add the time shift node and we can freeze the simulation add the frame maybe in 96 so let's remove that one delete channel and maybe 100 it can be good for the time shift and uh, now we can maybe remove this one and this one so let's select this icon and select 3d connected geometry so let's select this one and also this one and remove them so now we have that so let's add a null and uh, let's specify this is our leaves ready for the second simulation so leaves on the floor So now we have our base geometry and uh, now to create this leaves explosion we can use the volume to create the motion on our uh, vellum simulation. So, so here let's start by adding our geometry to emit our smoke. So let's add a sphere. So here the sphere by default is on polygon mesh. So in my case I will put it on polygon and I will put the frequency at maybe 15. And here I will increase the radius to 0.7 on the X and the Z axis. And here on the y-axis, I will uh, reduce just a little bit the size, so I will put 0.3. Now we have this type of spheres. So let's place it correctly into the scene. So let's add the transform node. And here I will reduce the size on the... So here I will reduce the position on the y-axis. So I will put minus one here. And now we have our leaves here and the emitter just bottom the leaves. So now let's add some normals into our geometry. So here let's start by adding our uh, pyro source to create a source based on this geometry for the smocks and here into the pyro source we can initialize our source, source mocks and here into the mod we can select surface scatter and we can define the particle separation here but we will link it to the solver and to the volume rasterize so for now I will keep it like this. So let's add the volume rasterize attribute here and we will rasterize our temperature and our density. And now let's start by adding the um, pyro solver. So here for the pyro solver, I will select the voxel size here. So I will control C and copy parameter and I will paste it into the volume rasterize attribute. So paste it here, paste relative reference. And the same for the pyro source here, paste relative reference. And here into the pyro spread, we can uh, put the voxel size at 0.02, for example. So now we have more resolutions and I can put the background into dark here. So now we have this smoke simulation. So into the bound and collision, everything will be by default. So you can increase the uh, substep if you want. But as this pyro simulation is only for the velocity, we don't need very high res uh, pyro. So here we can go into the sourcing and we can limit the source range here and we can emit from the frame one to frame uh, maybe 10. So in that case, the smoke will be emitting only from the frame one to the frame 10. And here into the field, we can disable the dissipations. And here into the shape, we can change the buoyancy uh, parameter. By default, I think the smoke will be a bit too fast. So I think we can uh, decrease the gravity acceleration to two instead of 9.8 and we can keep the gravity direction to minus one. So here we can add a bit of turbulence too, and we can uh, keep the parameter here by default, but if you want, you can play with this parameter, of course. So now let's see the result of our smoke simulations. So now we have this type of simulation for the smokes. So now let's put this mock simulation into our leaves to move our leaf based on this mock simulation. So let's add null here. And we can also add a file cache and we can rename it something like smoke simulations and we can also play with the uh, time scale into the setup here so maybe we can put the, the time scale at one here until the frame 24 and we can go at the frame maybe uh, 40 and we can put the uh, time scale at something like 0.25 to reduce the speed of our leave just after when we will make the vellum simulation so let's add another keyframe here into the vellum into the, the smoke sorry and maybe i will put it at the frame 40 35 
Okay, so now we can add uh, our file cache. So let's put it into explicit like before. Let's put it into the cache folder and dollar $OS folder, which is the name of the node. And we can put Vellum simulation tuts. And I will make this the, the cache simulation only for 100 frames. So let's remove that one and put 100 and let's click on save to disk. So now we have our smoke simulation here. So we can rename the null and we can rename it something like out smoke sim. And now we can add another uh, vellum simulation for our leaves. So let's add a vellum close. So like before, in my case, I will keep it everything by default here, but you can play with the bend uh, stiffness here. So let's add the vellum solver. So here into the vellum solver, most of the parameter will be by default. Just let's increase the substep to two and let's increase the collision pass to 30. And here you can go into force and keep everything by default except the gravity, you can put the gravity at zero. So now you can dive into the volume solver and you can add the pop advect by volume node. Pop advect by volume. And you can plug that into forces. And here you can uh, select the SOP, which is that nulls, which contains the smog simulation. So we can select that one into the pop advect by volume. So let's select the out smog sim. And here you can update our velocity. And now we can add a bit of wind, so let's add pop wind. And here into the pop wind, you can put the amplitude at 0.4 and we can decrease the rookness to 0.3 maybe. So now we can add another file cache. And here we can maybe uh, clean all the attributes before the second vellum solver. So let's add an attribute delete and let's delete everything uh, from the previous vellum simulation. So let's select here our um, textures, our CD attributes, uh, maybe our class. And I think that it's Uh, now you can select the attribute you want to keep and click on delete non-selected. So now all the non-necessary attribute is clean. So now you can make another file cache here and you can rename it uh, something like leaf explosion tut. And like before, you can put it into explicit. You can put it into the cache folder and you can put it into the dollar $OS folder like always. And here for the cache simulation, you can select uh, the frame you want. So in my case, I will put the cache from the frame one to the frame 100. So let's delete that one and let's put 100. So let's click on save to disk and let's see the results of our leaf explosions. So now the simulation is done. So let's see the results of our file cache here and let's click on play. And now we can see we have our leaf explosion based on our volume here. So of course you can play with different uh, settings into the pyro solver to get different shape into the smoke simulations. And the shape of the smokes will define the uh, motion of our leaves. So you can play with different settings into the pyro solver and also into the volume solver if you want to, um, oh sorry, into the volume close if you want to get more or less bend stiffness here. So you can use this volume to drive your uh, vellum object and you can get this type of beautiful leaf explosions. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership. See you in the next one. Bye.